as another application of conjugacy classes. We'll show that the group a sub n, the alternating group on n letters, is simple when n is greater than or equal to 5. Now, recall, a group is simple if the only normal subgroups are the identity subgroup and the group itself. For the alternating groups, we'll have two cases. First, I'm going to give a second proof that A5 is simple. Then, for n greater than 5, we're going to revisit the first proof and just update some items. Now, first case, A5 is simple. The way we're going to do it here, if we have a normal subgroup in A5, we have that the conjugacy classes are going to partition that normal subgroup, and the order of the normal subgroup divides 60. So we'll see that the combinatorics only work out if we have the identity subgroup or all of A5. Now, what kind of elements are in A5? So alternating group on n ladders is going to consist of all permutations that are even. So we have the identity element, we have three cycles. So recall, for a cycle to be an even permutation, it has an odd number of labels. We have five cycles, and we have products of disjoint two cycles. Okay, orders of elements are going to be one, three, five, and two. Now, to count the number of elements of each type, it's just combinatorics. So here we have five, four, three, divided by three gives me 20. Here I have five factorial divided by five, I get 24. Here we have five factorial divided by two, divided by two, and then we could switch the two cycles. So divide by another two, divide by eight, gives me 15. Then we take the sum, we get 60 as expected. Now, if I want to compute the orders of the conjugacy classes, we use our cardinality rule, it says, take the order of the group, divided by the order of the centralizer for some element in the class. If I consider the three cycle one, two, three, what's in the centralizer here? We have the identity, we have the element one, two, three itself, and we have the inverse one, three, two. We could try to add an element like two cycle four, five. That's gonna be an odd permutation, so it's not gonna be in AN or A5. So it's going to give us three elements. The number of elements in the class is going to be the order of the group divided by the order of the centralizer, so we get 20. And that's going to be all three cycles. Okay, so note, that's something we left hanging on our first proof. For the products of disjoint two cycles, okay, we note here in S4, this will belong to a Z2 cross Z2, which is abelian. So we expect to get four elements in here at least. And we note, if we try to add something that has a five as a label, we're not going to be in the centralizer. So we'll get a four here. That means the order of this class, 60 divided by four, 15, and that covers everything. For a five cycle, things are different. If I consider the centralizer of one, two, three, four, five, Okay, what's in there? We have the identity, we have the element itself, and we have all powers of that element. So here we're just looking at a subgroup isomorphic to Z mod five. Okay, there won't be any other elements in here. So we're gonna wind up getting that the order of the class is 60 divided by five, which gives us a 12. We note, this is not gonna be everything. So what happens is, for our five cycles, they break into two classes when we go from S5 to A5. Now, if you actually want to compute what was in the given class, so let's say we go for one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm not gonna label that again, so we expect 12 to come out. You could do conjugations, but it's much easier to just use the conjugation rule. So if we conjugate by permutation, all we're doing is relabeling the elements using that permutation. So I'm going to relabel all of these using three cycles. The trick is going to be we fix two of the labels and then just start shifting the remaining three. So for instance, for, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. I'll fix one and five. And then I just start shifting. So two, three, four, if I shift to
to the left by one gives me three, four, two. Do it one more time, I get the four, two, three. Okay, and then you just keep doing that. Now when you get eight of these, that trick's not gonna work anymore on the original. So you'll note, for instance, if you take a look at the ones that start with one, three, we only have two of those. So just go look for the one that's missing. So I'm gonna have one, three, four, two, five. Shift by one, I get one, three, two, five, four. And the same will work for the other two that we're missing. So that's one way to get the whole class. Now, if you want to get all 24 together, you go to S5, you take, for instance, the two cycle one, two, and that'll glue your two classes back together. Now, that means orders for the classes are gonna be 1, 12, 12, 15, and 20. If I have a normal subgroup, then that's gonna be a union of disjoint conjugacy classes. So the order of our normal subgroup is gonna be some sum of these numbers. And because we have the identity, we have to have the one. Now, when we take that sum, it also has to divide 60. And if you stop and look at this, there's no way that that's gonna happen unless we have one or 60 itself. So that says we only have normal subgroups, the identity, or all of A5 itself. Let's consider the case where n is greater than five. Here, we just adapt the first proof that A5 is simple and add some extra bookkeeping. Now, in the first proof, basic outline is, we show the three cycles generate all of AN. Then, we show that the three cycles form their own conjugacy class. Then, if I have a normal subgroup and it contains a three cycle, we get everything back. So all the work is in showing that if I have anything besides the identity, a three cycle has to show up. Now, let's go through what we already have. Now, one result from the previous video on symmetric and alternating groups is that the three cycles will generate all of AN. Next, we wanna show the three cycles form their own class. Now, if we count, so the number of three cycles in AN, we use our counting method. So we have N, N minus one, N minus two, and then we divide by three. To find the number of three cycles in the class for say one, two, three, we can use our cardinality rule. So I'll have to find the number of elements in the centralizer of the element one, two, three. Now, to make this easier to think about, let's just consider the elements in S sub N that send one, two, three back to themselves. So not necessarily centralizing, but cutting our work down. Well, that's gonna be an S sub three cross with an S sub N minus three. Now, if I look for elements in here that are gonna centralize this element, okay, we're only gonna have three coming from the S3. So those are gonna be the identity, cycle one, two, three, and it's inverse one, three, two. Then I can have anything else here, but if I wanna be in the alternating group, have an even permutation, if I have an even permutation here, I have to have one here also. So that says the order of the centralizer, it's going to be 3 times n minus 3 factorial divided by 2. We apply the cardinality rule. So we do our division and we get n, n minus 1, n minus 2 divided by 3. So these numbers are equal. The three cycles form their own class. So how do we finish? Let's suppose we have a normal subgroup in AN. We're assuming it's not just the identity element. So all I need to do is show if we can get a three cycle in this normal subgroup. We get all three cycles, and they're gonna generate all of AN. Now, for our first reduction for finding a three cycle, okay, we saw this in the first proof that A5 is simple. If we have, okay, normal subgroup in AN, if I have a five cycle or a product of disjoint two cycles, we can get a three cycle. So we'll settle for finding one of either of these. Let's suppose our normal subgroup has an element not equal to the identity. 
call such an element sigma. Sigma is going to have order equal to the integer m greater than 1. Now, when we write sigma as a product of disjoint cycles, I want to have control over the cycle length. So what we'll do, I'm going to take p, smallest prime that divides m, and if p is equal to m, we do nothing. Otherwise, I'm going to replace sigma with sigma raised to the m over p power. So this new sigma is going to have order p. That means we can write the new sigma as a product of disjoint p cycles, and we have a few cases. First, if we just have a single two, three, or five cycle, our work's done. We can't have a single two cycle because that's a non-permutation. Okay, we just want to rule that out. If we have a three cycle, we're done. If we have a five cycle, we know how to turn that into a three cycle. Otherwise, we're going to use our trick of conjugate and multiply. So since I have a normal subgroup, if I have an element in there, if we conjugate, it stays in the normal subgroup. And because we have a subgroup, if we multiply two elements, it stays in the subgroup. Again, we'll have a few cases. First, when the prime is equal to 2. So sigma is going to be a product of disjoint two cycles. If we have just two, then we know how to turn this into a three cycle. What we do is conjugate by the three cycle ABC. So recall by the conjugation rule for symmetric groups, if I conjugate a permutation sigma by omega, then I'm just going to relabel the elements, the labels, and sigma using omega. So here we have A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A. So this product, A, B, C, D, goes to B, C, A, D. And for the terms we're not using, they're going to be left alone. Now, for the two cycles that are not showing, they're going to be equal to their own inverse. So if I multiply sigma times omega, what remains are going to be the following four two cycles. And we work out the product. We get a product of disjoint two cycles. That we know how to get to a three cycle, so we're done. Next case, if p is equal to three. So we have a product of disjoint three cycles. Okay, here we're gonna have at least two, or we're done. A little bit different trick. I'm gonna conjugate by three cycle a, b, d. So a goes to b, b goes to d, d goes to a. This three cycle goes to b, d, c. This one goes to a, e, f. The remaining cycles are left alone. Now, we don't want to multiply sigma and omega because we're not going to get the remaining terms, okay, the ones that are not showing, to cancel out. So I multiply by omega inverse instead. So omega inverse, okay, what do we do? If I fix the B, we switch the order of the other two labels. So I have B, C, D, A, F, E. For the terms that are not showing, we're just going to put an inverse on them. Now if I take omega inverse times sigma, the terms that are not shown cancel, and we're left with the following four three cycles. And when you work out the product, you get a five cycle. So we know how to turn that into a three cycle, and then we're done in this case. Finally, consider p greater than three. So we have five cycles or larger in the permutation. Now we could have a single cycle in this permutation, for convenience, I'm just going to use a five cycle. Although it'll work for any length, you just have to stick your elements in between the C and the D for the argument I'm using. Now, I'm going to conjugate by A, B, E. So I'm taking the first two and the last, but really it'll work with any three in a row to get the same answer here. Then, okay, we do our conjugation. So A goes to B, B goes to E, E goes to A. So I get omega here, and the remaining terms, if there are any, are going to be left alone. We take omega inverse. So we fix the B, reverse the order, put an inverse on any extra cycles, then we multiply. When we work that out, okay, everything we're not showing cancels, so I just have two five cycles in this case, and we get a three cycle. So that case works out also. So if I have a normal subgroup with an element other than the identity, we get back all of a n. 
Now, for a final example, take a look at A6. So that's six factorial over two elements, or 360. Okay, I'll just give you the list of the table, and you can work everything out. So what do we have in A6? We have the identity, three cycles, proximal disjoint two cycles, five cycles, proximal disjoint three cycles, and proximal disjoint four cycle with two cycles. Okay, note we want to have six cycles because if I have a cycle with an even number of labels, it's an odd permutation. Okay, we have the orders. We have the counts for the numbers of elements, and we see that the five cycles and the disjoint four cycles with a two cycle are going to split in two classes. I'll leave it to you to work out the centralizers. And I'll note, you can use the same argument that we did before for A5, just by trying to get the numbers to add up for a normal subgroup. So we tried that. Smallest normal subgroup you can have that's not the identity has to have 41 elements, and you'll see quickly that that's not going to work unless you have the whole group. 